Welcome back to another foil design video with Mozzy Sales. I've again got with me Rob Gullard and Tom Partington and today we're going to be talking about one of the really obvious features and that is the area of the foils and kind of a little bit about their shape, the kind of front edge sweep taper ratio. Um, some really interesting stuff there and what's fascinating as well is you can kind of pinpoint how these design choices have influenced the way the boats are sailing and racing around the race course and we can pull it out and have a look at a bit of some of the data as well which kind of backs up some of our uh, assumptions about the foil design. So um, yeah, let's jump right into it. The huge, huge visual difference, you, know, you either look at the foil straight on and you can see their Ys or Ts or if you look at them from the side and you can see that some of them are like twice the size of the others um what's what's the thinking on these on these areas because they're all they're all doing the same lift that that's the that's the kind of elephant in the room the, the boats all weigh pretty much you know the same, same yeah. there's not a, a huge amount so they're all producing the same amount of vertical lift why do some boats need a huge area and some boats have a tiny area there is a there's a surprisingly large difference uh in the foil areas um Ineos and Luna Rossas their area is about 50 percent larger than that of Emirates to New Zealand um and so lift of foil is driven by three main parameters really you've got your area you've got your boat speed uh, and then you've got your lift coefficient of the wing so if you're assuming that uh, two boats are going the same speed, then actually what you're then looking at is your foil area or your lift coefficient. Basically that shows how important the foil area is in terms of lift generation. But what is clear that this massive variation in foil geometry shows that these teams haven't all converged on one solution as how the main foil area, the aspect ratio of the wing, uh, anhedral angles and foil sections interact with each other so it, at the moment there's no i think we've got an opinion of what's what we think is the best uh, solution but that from a design perspective it's not been very obvious so just taking ineos as an example they've got 50 percent more area and their aspect ratio is 35 percent lower than that of emirates to new zealand what does this mean in terms of generating lift lower aspect foils are more forgiving than a higher aspect one it means that you can be more aggressive in maneuvers because they have a higher stall angle um, and they have a lower roll inertia so you can turn turn more quickly um, in, a, in a simplicity they you've actually got more area outboard um, which can allow for a more stable platform um, think of a monohull versus a cat is an extreme example of this. So you can make the boat feel a bit more planted during manoeuvres. A really good example of this was um, when Ineos did their, their, their foiling head up and tack manoeuvre in race five, the Prada Cup, absolutely killer move that got them back into the race. If you've got smaller foils, um, so you've reduced that area, um, you've then got to have higher lift coefficient to counteract that, to be able to take off at the same speed. So, so, and in simple terms, the more you increase your angle of attack, the higher your lift coefficient is going to be. Um, so the, the teams that we see with small area foils are likely to have to run those at a higher angle of attack if they want to take off at the same speed. But that becomes quite a complex problem in that all of these boats have different hulls. So the ease at which they will be able to get up to a takeoff speed is going to vary um, just due to power available in the sail plan and drag of the hull. So you can see very quickly it becomes a pretty complex question as to whether you want to, do you want to have high angle of attack, which might be draggier, but you have a lower drag hull and you actually achieve a higher takeoff speed quicker so then you can reduce your angle of attack that, that's the kind of circle they'll be going in and the other thing on angle of attack is we can we 
can get quite a good idea of what the angle of attack of these foils are by the pitch that we're seeing the boat sailing around with. This allows us to show the pitch footage. We do suppose that the boats with the smaller foil areas are having to run a greater angle of attack or angle of instance, whatever, relative to the relative to the hull to get the lift. And we also see those boats running most pitch down, don't we, at the front as well. So there is a color correlation there. It is muted also by cant. When, when the foils, these foils aren't down planted like that, they're out to the side. So if you, if you have that angle of attack, obviously you'll need to be pitched down to level out, but you'll also see some, um, some kind of positive leeway as well. And we also see that a little bit from Emirates Team New Zealand, that it often looks like they're, they're crabbing up as well. So there is a bit of, there is a bit of ev visual evidence and kind of like that they are running those that's how they're achieving the takeoff speeds with those um high aspect foils that's good what we what we're seeing kind of in the videos kind of marries up with their design philosophy as it were they they're sailing it as you'd expect it to look like it should be sailed for what their design yeah. decisions that they've made but after we look at you know some foils are big some foils are small i guess the next thing is the actual the shape is different in that we see a very marked kind of triangular shaped foil from from ilios we then see a more curved shape from luna rossa um emirates team new zealand's latest foils are a bit more triangular they do have a bit of sweep on the leading leading edge but again it is it is generally a straighter a straighter section there what 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 are the pros and cons of that leading edge sweep? That's what I'd like to like to know. Rob's already said one. <laughs> well, I mean, for a given, all of the foils have what's known as a taper ratio. So that is effectively what is the ratio between the cord at the tip to the cord at the root. And as you increase that taper ratio, generally you go for more sweep on the foil. So. Ineos have a fairly high taper ratio and they have sweep. So that, that makes sense. Um, Luna Rossa again have a fairly high taper ratio and we see sweep. Um, and I think the curvature of the leading edge on the Luna Rossa foil is a little bit because as you get to the tip, the Reynolds numbers are effectively higher than at the root just because the cord is shorter. So it makes sense to have a bit more sweep as you progress the, the relatively faster flowing water. And also for stopping um, ventilation traveling down the foil so easily. And I guess it keeps more area deeper as well, the, the, the higher the taper, top 30 centimeters of yeah. the water and certainly the wave piercing bit, you know, if you've got wave action, you've got unpredictable kind of like wide yeah. height locally so, there then you if you're losing a tip which is only you know five percent of this foil area rather than 10 or 15 percent then you know the, it, there's probably something in probably something in that theory yeah less percentage but, lift gets lost these kind of taper ratios and sweeps so it goes back to the weight distribution challenge you've got a set span and so in, in this instance, you, you're always going to maximize your span to the, to the rule. Then, then it becomes, well, if your root section has been driven by your mechanical requirements or weight requirements um, in order to optimize the rule, then, then your taper or your sweep or leading edge is basically, that is then going to be defining your area. As you say, Tom, if, you're, if your route's dictated to you, you're always going to have small tips and everything yeah. else is kind of just a result of what your route is and what your span is, which yeah. you don't have much choice over. Yeah. But, but, you, but you can see the, the minute you chuck the hull and then the, the power of the sail plan into the mix, this it just e even something as simple as this becomes pretty complicated. And then I think the other thing I'd like to pick up on that Tom has mentioned is we've seen Ineos with a boat that they can throw around and they've used that to really good effect. And the guys will have been able to input these kind of foil characteristics into their simulator and actually do test laps. So 
top speed is a nice thing to have, but what they're all actually trying to achieve is the highest average speeds around a lap. And mm. if they feel that the forgiving foil in tax gives them more of a gain than they get from top speed in the straight line, that's going to be what they'll go for. Yeah. If one team or another have made slightly different decisions, that'll really drive them down a direction and then explains why we're seeing different shaped equipment on the race course. Yeah, it's very, and it is very hard to correct a, a, a wrong turn in the design process. You say from the very start, our foils are gonna be, you know, we've got a really clever idea of how we're gonna control the flap. So we're gonna have blended, blended foil body, all the weight in the arms, no ball, but we're gonna use these flaps. Then that already commits you, all your technology is invested then for the long haul. Okay, so I think it's, that gets us to a bit of a conclusion about the kind of overall shape and how it's influenced by the kind of root cord selection and some of the implications of these design choices. Um, next video, we're gonna be diving into the flap articulation. Some really interesting stuff there, some kind of America's Cup photography sleuthing to um, kind of come up with ideas about how these flaps are working. Um, so some interesting stuff there. If you're enjoying this kind of technical speculation content, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in a few days time.